Going live in five, four, three, two, one. As my son would do. Welcome everyone to Breaking Bread with Corey. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. We have a doubleheader um, starting right now at 3.30 with Siobhan Bell. Um, and so excited to be breaking bread with her in just a few moments. And then uh, later on at 5.30, I'm going to be breaking bread with Gabriela Fernandez. So I'm so excited to bring these lady ambassadors on. So excited. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate the support, uh, the viewership, anything that you could offer. I really appreciate it. <laughs> uh, I'm setting up my camera here. So bear with me. I hope everybody is doing well. Uh, how's everybody doing? Everybody enjoying their Thursday? I think it's Thursday, right? It's Thursday. Um, let me see. Da, 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 da. Hello, everybody. Hello. Ba, ba. Hello, hello, hello. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Perfect. All right. Everybody's doing good. Da, 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 da. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Just want to make sure everybody's here. Everybody's good. Don't mind me. Da, 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 da. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. Um, as I was saying, um, we are we're having a double header today starting at 3.30 right now with Siobhan Ball. I'm so excited. Uh, two great lady ambassadors doing their thing in the industry. Uh, look out, gentlemen. Here they come. And I'm so excited to be sitting with them and sharing the screen with them. Hello, thank you so much for joining everyone. Uh, thank you for the support. Um, so we have Siobhan, Siobhan Bell at right now at 3.30 and then at 5.30 we have Gabriela Fernandez, uh, two powerhouses as they, all the ladies I call them powerhouses because they know what they're doing. Um, so I'm so excited to be sharing the screen with them today. This pairing is something very simple. I'm continuing with uh, Mario Paisan Sellers Sauvignon Blanc. Um, notes, believe me, it is unbelievable how it's drinking so well after, I believe, four days. Uh, with Dad Brain, I'm trying to calculate all four days. Uh, but it's got your typical citrus notes, but even a little bit of bruised banana and meringue. Um, absolutely magnificent. And I'm pairing them with one of Trader Joe's new items, uh, these plantain crisps. They're like potato chips. They're almost like ruffles or like your regular kettle chips. Absolutely delicious. Um, Got to keep them away from my son because they're for Papa. It's Papa time. That's what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and bring our lovely guest on. Thank you so much for joining, everybody. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining. Really appreciate it. See if the magic of technology works. Hello, hello, hi, hey, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you for so much for giving your time. Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> hello. How you doing? Hi. I'm good. How are you? Good. I know you're in the middle of your moving, correct? I just moved. Yeah, I just moved. Uh, it'll be a week tomorrow. Um, Hallelujah. So still <laughs> unpacking. We're almost done with unpacking. <laughs> still, you're, so you're kind of living out of U-Haul boxes still, correct? A little we're, bit of U-Haul boxes, maybe? We're still some boxes. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those, like, I have nothing. And then when I finally move, I'm like, who has this much stuff? It's too much stuff. 
but almost absolutely there. yeah it's looking absolutely great. i i never knew how how much stuff especially when you have a child that you don't, you don't realize like my wife and i stuff were like very small into the moving truck yeah. And then we had my son stuff, which covered the rest of <laughs> the movie track. It was crazy. Um, but Siobhan, I am so excited to be sharing the screen with you today. Uh, we've talked for many weeks getting this thing set up. Yeah. And uh, uh, I uh, thank you for your time and your support yes. and for joining me today. I really appreciate it. So why don't you go ahead, Siobhan, go ahead and introduce yourself and Tell the viewer who you are. <laughs> Hi, guys. My name is Siobhan Ball. I am the owner and operator of Dirty Radish. It is a travel, wine, and consulting company. I take people on wine tours in the Willamette Valley and when we can again in Beaujolais in the south of uh, Burgundy in France. And then I also do consulting, like hospitality consulting and uh, restaurants and wineries. And then I also just became a winemaker last year. So now I can add that to my little resume. <laughs> nice, nice. And, and you know, the, 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 the thing that we have, I always say, I always connect with a lot of the ambassadors that I share the screen with. I feel like we're all kindred spirits. And we have a lot in common. And with you and I, some of our favorite regions, you talk about Oregon and France, especially the Beaujolais region. So those, yep. That's talking my language. What, good, what actually good. got you? What, what actually got you so connected, connected with yeah. these particular regions? Well, I'm from the Pacific Northwest. I grew up in Vancouver, Washington. So I've lived here my whole life right. working in restaurants. Obviously, in Portland, um, you serve a lot of Willamette Valley wines. I had the honor of working at Le Pigeon for many years and L Little Bird Bistro. So we not only, um, you know, served those wines, but I also met a lot of the winemakers by working at those restaurants. My connection to Beaujolais is from working at Le Pigeon. I really became uh, very fond of Beaujolais wines, um, specifically because they were um, still a high quality, but uh, like a burgundy, but the cost was more along my budget. <laughs> so yes, I liked those very wines. Nice. And then I ended up moving to that region. So I, mo I moved to Lyon back in 2009 and um, just really happened to become friends with all the right people and uh, met a lot of these winemakers and have been friends with them ever since. That sounds like that sounds like a total dream. You know, I've <laughs> I've been thinking about this. No, seriously, I've been thinking about this. This was one of my dreams as far as even getting to Oregon when my wife and I were deciding, okay, California is too expensive, the cost of living is way too out there. What are we gonna do and how could I get close enough to wine country to actually do what I love doing? without it being and without being living in like living in the closet you know in california you're, you're paying triple the amount you're working three jobs and living in the closet uh right. and so we we're like we wanted to give my kid opportunity so we decided to make the trip to oregon but i love oregon wine country it's absolutely gorgeous but as far as burgundy when you talk about Beaujolais and just these areas that i've seen you know, I've dreamed about, you know, you lived it, you've been there, but for me, like, I've only dreamed about it. This is something that I've watched many years on the tour, Tour de France. That's how, that's how I got my, my start into wine was watching the tour and it, it progressed from there. But watching the tour and always seeing these beautiful regions, it's just absolute and aerial shots of, yeah. you know, these old places, places of mm -hmm. history, and you're going, I mean, how was that when you were there? Were you just, when you got off the plane, were you just like, I'm stepping into history? Uh, kind of. I mean, you know, I got off the plane, and I thought, oh, it's going to be great. I speak French, but then I realized very quickly that I did not speak French, <laughs> and so that was a struggle. <laughs> Um, and then, uh, yeah, you know, you're walking down the streets of Lyon and you're seeing Roman ruins. Like, that's crazy, right? Like, it's so mind boggling. Yeah. And, you know, I love 
what we have done with our pioneering spirit here in the Willamette Valley, but there you're talking like 10th, 11th, 12th generation winemakers. It goes back so far and it's just a really amazing history. There's a young woman that I know her family and they, um, have one of the older wineries in Beaujolais and she was maybe 16 at the time and had come to visit and we were talking and I said oh you know the your great great so-and-so grandfather whoever started it do you have a picture of him and she said uh we have a painting of him <laughs> I thought, <of> <laughs> <laughs> well, that's crazy yeah uh, so it's, it's a very it's, different it's world. so far back <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And so far back that they didn't have this, they had to do this to actually get a picture. That's awesome. <laughs> so perspective, that is so cool. perspective, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And how was it like, as far as even going to these domains, these chateaus and seeing them firsthand? I mean, I know you said it's a lot of history, yeah. but how was it like just being there? Yeah, you know, it's an interesting thing. So I, I was, again, really lucky. So it's a convoluted story. But basically, I became really good friends um, with a gentleman named Aurelian Firaday, who uh, is an export manager for a collective of Beaujolais producers. So I was having pretty unprecedented access to these winemakers. And it wasn't like I was thinking about Dirty Radish or having a company. I was just living my life. And you know, I had been serving some of their wines at Le Pigeon. Like I, I knew these wines pretty well. And so then to meet them and to have them be so warm and welcoming and gracious and just really wanting to put a good product in the bottle for you to drink with your friends and have a good time, just that really kind of solidified my love of wine. Um, but it's, right. it's magical. And now I get to share that hopefully again post covid with everyone yeah. taking them taking them for that experience it's you know there's very distinct um smells in the cellars of beaujolais and i can smell them when i open the wine um here I, I i yeah, know yeah. it's from beaujolais i know i can i can place myself in these places and you know with beaujolais yeah. with the crews of beaujolais you know they're all very different just like we have our sub avas mm -hmm. here and right. it's it's an incredible thing to see them in person. Like, you know, Moulin Avant means a uh, windmill and there really is a windmill <laughs> in Beaujolais. It sits on top That's of a insane. hill. insane. You know. That is so awesome. Cool. Yeah. And, you know, that's the thing. That's the power of wine. It, that's the, I call the romance of wine is how it can be so nostalgic of, when you pop that bottle open, it could take you back to a time and place that you've been. Yes. That's the one thing that's really special about the bottle of wine. And I always say, slow it down. You know, don't, you know, it's, it's, it's not a shot. You know, it's, it's, not a, it's not a beverage. It is wine. And it's, it's like yeah. years and years. And you talk about going, especially the appreciation. Like, I always think, man, being able, I think I would just, pass out if I went to one of these places because I this is something that I've just like I said I've dreamed about I was actually planning a a, a huge bike trip and this is pre-marital -mar days before I got married but I was planning a, a trip during my 40th birthday and I was going to take my bike and it was I was going to travel around France live on cheese and wine yeah hit my favorite region <laughs> and I never I didn't have the, the opportunity to do it some personal things came up, but that would be just like, like you said, I, I could only dream of just popping open a bottle of wine and just, man, I'm in Beaujolais. Yeah, there's, something, that is it. there's something really special about drinking a wine in the place with the people. Um, you know, it, it definitely takes everything up a, a whole nother level. Um, but definitely, I mean, you know, it's one of those things like people say this a lot and I get it. Life happens. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, right. bills are very real. Um, but I believe it so strongly that I tattooed it on my arm and it says, si tu veux, tu peux, which means if you want, you can. So I feel like ah. when you make the decision, you just say yes and you make it happen. So I, I have no doubt in my mind that you'll be in France sooner than later. <laughs> I, I love that. I love that. 
I love that. And, and, and not to disrupt you, but I want to ask the viewer, could, could everybody see Siobhan like clearly? Cause she looks a little bit like you've been coming in a little bit pixelated. Oh no. And I didn't want to stop you from the conversation. So I just wanted to make sure you're looking okay. And if, if, if does everybody see Siobhan, if anybody could give feedback on your end or if it's just my end, I want to make sure it's not my dad eyes and it's everybody. Cause I want to make sure we're getting the correct visual that we want. Um, I see myself and, just fine, um, but I also am in a, yeah. a new house with new um, internet and new internet, uh, all those things. So I'm not sure. I hope it's okay. I hope it's a good connection. So we could try. We could try. What we could do one or two things. We could continue with just like it as is, or if you want to try to um, disconnect and reconnect, okay. try Great. that. I'll Let's come right try back. That. Yeah, she says she says you're blurry. I'll come right back. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you everybody for the heads up. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I wanna make sure that when we're sitting down that our ambassadors that are sharing the screen, they're giving their time and their energy and I wanna make sure they get it correct. So, and every, for everybody else to enjoy, that's the whole thing. We gotta do this together. We gotta enjoy this together. So uh, I, I really appreciate the, the comment letting us know it's still blurry. We'll get it reconnected. Um, what an amazing thing. Just the beginning of her story, I'm, I'm like excited. Oh, man. Let's try it. Let's see if we can get it. There you are. There you go. That Clear? beautiful. Clear? Absolute. Clear? Absolutely beautiful. Okay, I, I love it. I love it. But I want to see the tattoo again. Can oh, yeah. You, just, uh, you can't see it because it's going to be backwards, yeah. but it just says, see Tupa yeah. Tupa. Yeah, it's on my arm. So I see it all the see, time. That's, see, I think that's the thing that also another kindred spirit, that's what I called my own personal, uh, basically my tasting company was La Vela Voyage, the tra traveling bicycle. Okay. Uh, and I had like a little, little mouse on a bike <laughs> traveling around. Um, but... You know, I think that's the thing is when you have that that uh, that connection, especially to history like that, it just changes everything. It, it it creates a deeper appreciation, more of a romantic appreciation for what's in that bottle. And like yeah. I said, I've always I've I grew up with classics. I'm old school. I'm very old school when it comes to things. Um, but I always think wine is like a classic movie. You know, it is just classic. Absolutely down, down, down. Um, but I wanted to also ask you, like, you have so many accolades and so many things on your resume. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Um, you, you know, um, I, I was really excited to uh, ask you about the, the 40 under 40 tastemaker of 2020. I want to hear about that. Go ahead and talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was such a, um, you know, I I thought I was going to miss out because I turned 40, uh, you know, last year. And, you know, I thought, um, you know, when I was 39, I, I'll back that up. I've been wanting to be in that since I was 31. So I was like kind of secretly hoping that I would maybe get it. But I never knew like how I would make that happen or if I could. And when I turned 39, I was like, well, that's it. I'll never, you know, it won't happen. And then lo and behold, it happened. And it was so crazy. And I just, I'm still so grateful and, um, you know, excited to be recognized in something like that. Um, and to be amongst those um, alumni who are in there. Um, it's definitely a game changer. It adds just a little bit of pressure. You know, you've got to bring it Absolutely. now because you're like yeah. signed, sealed, and delivered as being, you know, um, someone who has a voice and uh, who can say things about wine. Because I still, as much as I know about wine and I love wine and I, I love drinking it, talking about it, I still, there's so much to learn and there's so much to to to, you know, be able to do. I mean, I made wine for the first time last year. I mean, who knew? You know, um, not one, but two wines. I mean, two wines. That's awesome. So awesome. Um, it's, you know, it's all sort of crazy. But uh, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm really grateful to have received that award. Very, very lucky. 
So for the viewers that don't know the full detail, could you go a little bit more detail on that? Like what that all represents? Yeah, so, you know, Wine Enthusiast is, you know, a very, um, you know, well-respected magazine. And um, they, they do this choosing every year of 40 people that they think are um, making a change or differences in the beverage world. And, uh, you know, for them, they do it for people who are under 40. So they're looking for, you know, kind of that younger crowd. Um, not to say right. that you can't change things or do things when you're past 40 or past 50, um, but that's their thing. And and so, yeah, right. it's kind of a, you know, kind of a big deal. It's kind of a big deal to be yeah. in it. And, um, you know, I, last year was just crazy. Being in Wine Enthusiast, being on the cover of Oregon Wine Press was crazy. Um, who knew? Bravo. You know? Thank you. Yeah, that is, that's absolutely just, like I said, if I had a, if I had a hat, I'd tip it off to you. <laughs> um, it's just, it, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's amazing what you're doing. And I can just tell just by what you're presenting right now in just a few minutes that we have shared the screen together. It's your personality. <laughs> the personality and your passion for your the wine and what you do, that shows. You know, Thank there's you. people you could, you, could, you could automatically tell from the first two minutes that you meet somebody how they are and how they, they present things. And you have it, and that's there's no doubt, there's no reason why you should have won that <laughs> that accolade. It's absolutely really, really that's a that's a huge congratulations to you. Thank really, you so much. That's Thank awesome. you. That is so awesome. And you're also like the one of the other things that I saw too is you did were a rising star, rising star of the seven fifty daily. Yeah. Can you so go on to tell us like like I'm I'm sitting with a celebrity here, like I'm like, whoa. <laughs> hardly, it's like, hardly, hardly. No, no. No, every, every time I sit with somebody, I feel like, oh, my gosh, I feel like this small. No, I'm it's just so, a regular old so, no, person no, it is, drinking regular no, wine, is, doing regular old things. But, um, but you know what? It's, it's awesome what you're doing, though. I just got to tell you that. It's thank awesome. You. Uh, yeah, I um. So it's kind of a you know to really to show people how things really work around here. So what ha happened was is way back in 2000, I think it was must have been 2012 or 2013. I did a dinner at a restaurant called Smallwares with Peter Leem, and it was a sherry pairing dinner. And Catherine Cole, the writer and podcast queen. Um, she was at that dinner and the pairings I did because I'm kind of wacky when I do pairings because I think way outside the box right. really surprised people and she never forgot that dinner so fast forward um, she and I had a coffee I think it was in like 2017 or 18 and um, she was just asking me about my journey in wine and just talking to me about it. And I wasn't even thinking about the fact that she's a journalist. And she was writing an article in her head <laughs> about me. And that article was then published in 750 Daily. And that's how I think 750 Daily got a hold of my name and um, decided to put me in as one of the rising stars of Portland. So, you know, you never know who you're going to meet or what things might come from just doing one little simple dinner. Um, and that's, that's how that kind of came to be. That now you're just the one second you're starting, it, it, it cut out, but oh. now your audio cut out. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. oh the great Technical world of technology. Uh, you want to try to reset it one more time? Yeah. I'll Let's try on. to reset it one more time. Okay. That's the power of of this beautiful world of technology. Man, Siobhan has such an amazing history in what she's done, her incredible pairings, her just her mentality, her personality. That is what's taking her to the higher of higher heights. It's pretty amazing. Um, let me see if I can reconnect with her. I apologize, everyone. I don't know why this is happening with the audio and the video, but we're going to try to get it connected and get it done right. 
I heard everything. What a, what a story. Oh, yeah. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. Let's see if we can reconnect. We're getting connected. How's everybody doing out there? Everybody doing good? All right. Let's see if we can bring her on. Da, 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 da. Let's see. It's not. I sent you the invite. It's. Oh, there we go. I heard her. Let's try it one more time. There we go. There we go. Let's see if it connects. Thank you, everyone, for bearing with us. <laughs> I'm outside yeah. now. You're gonna stand. You're gonna stand out with your head up in the I'm air, outside. your leg up in the air. <laughs> I'm outside. Hopefully that helps. <laughs> yeah, so that? it's, it's great. It's great. Uh, um, so, so now that you, 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 the rising star, the forty and forty, um, tell us about the. Um, the uh let's see the the talk, talk, tell us about the dirty radish how mm. that became about yeah so when i came back to france after living in france um i started managing restaurants and i was like the gm i was a wine buyer um it seemed like the most logical next step um but I wasn't totally satisfied and I wasn't really happy with the work and things had sort of changed in the restaurant scene. And so I sort of started thinking about how I wanted to spend my time and what I wanted to be doing. And at the same time, I was missing France. Um, I was hearing people talk about their negative experiences in France. And I wanted to make sure that, you know, I was sad that people weren't having the same kind of experience I was having. Right. And so um, after another visit in 2016, I just made the decision that I was going to start a travel company and take people on wine tours in France. And um, I decided and I created that business in 2017. I'll be four years old in May. And um, I had a very successful first trip already, like a few trips now. And I just, um, I just decided, I decided I wanted to start there. And then it just sort of came into all the other things, you know, consulting, winemaking. Um, it just sort of blew from there. And I, I wasn't expecting it. I'm so grateful and happy <laughs> that yeah. my business is successful. Um, but Dirty Radish, the name comes from just really, honestly, I had a dinner at my house when I was um, considering making this a business with a bunch of friends who are CEOs and entrepreneurs. And I was in the kitchen cooking and someone went to grab a radish and I said, don't touch that. It's a dirty radish. And someone said, write that on the board. <laughs> and so we wrote it on the board. <laughs> and over the course of the evening... <laughs> It kept getting circled and I just, <laughs> I sort of sat with it and I just loved it. And I just thought, you know, it's, yeah, this is what I want to call my business is Dirty Radish. Yeah. It, it's pretty rad. I, I, I love it. I was always enticed to like ask you like, where did this name come from? And the history, like when you find out how the name came about to a lot of people's companies, it's, it's pretty hilarious. Uh, but I love it. I love it. It's got soul. It's got depth to it. It's also um, a little ambiguous. You don't so, know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> oh man. So so um, as far as the dirty radish, as far as where you're traveling to, so do you just travel to? Is, is it certain areas of Oregon, like, or do you travel all over? So right now, my focus is Willamette Valley. Um, okay. You know, it's, it's my literal backyard. <laughs> and, um, yes. Yeah. 
And so right now, the focus in Oregon is definitely that. I'm definitely hoping to expand to parts of Southern Oregon. Um, I'm really enjoying Sonoma right now. I've been working a lot with some people in Sonoma. I'm very curious about okay. that area and expanding down there, possibly. And then in France, um, I've been asked to do possibly a trip to Champagne. Um, so we're looking at Ooh. 2022 and 2023 for that. And then obviously, it's always going to be Beaujolais. The, the thing and the reason that it works, that, um, that these tours work and what is different is they genuinely are people that are my friends. They're people that I know organically, authentically. So when we walk in the door, you walk in with a friend who happens to be friends with all these other people. So it's not um, your typical tour, whether it's stateside or in France. Right. Yeah. So I didn't know I didn't know that you were this close. I didn't know we were this close to each other. I I, I I just assumed that we you were further away from me. So a a quick question: Do you babysit? Cause <laughs> my wife no. and I need a date now. <laughs> no. I was a preschool teacher no. for five years. I'm done. I'm good. You're I'm like, good. I'm done. I'm over it. I'm over it. No, it's great. It, it's great to know somebody else is here, that I know somebody else in, in, the, in the area. Yeah, uh, that's no, that's I, so I, awesome. I have no children. My house is very quiet. It's very quiet. <laughs> You're like, and I'm going to keep it that way. <laughs> yep. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> so, so you're working on you're working on Oregon. You're working on some things in Champagne and Beaujolais and even Sonoma. Yeah. What areas in Sonoma are you actually looking at? Is there a particular region that is just really that I you're am, kind of focusing on? That is, I have been going down there um, fairly regularly now. This last year, I've been doing a lot of driving down there, and I'm just I'm exploring right now. I'm in the exploring phase. I have a cons I'm consulting with a client down there, so I'm learning a lot about the region through that. Um, and that's, you know, that's sort of where it's going to come from. If and when it happens, it's going to have happened once again organically. It just, you know, it just sort of right. happens that I, that I meet these people and I make it happen because, you know, there's nothing wrong with the way other tours do it. This is not how I do it. You know, I want to have that right. genuine connection with the people. I only take people to very, right. like, small places. Um, they're boutique. They're um, organic, typically. Biodynamic, sustainable. Like, those things are really important okay. to me. Um, and so it just has to feel good. And I, I'm, I'm excited because there's so many wineries in Sonoma to explore. <laughs> And California absolutely, absolutely. is definitely a region that I'm not well versed in, but I'm learning a lot. It's really fun. Yeah, it, it, every area in California, it seems like it's just exploding from Temecula to Santa Barbara, even the the Los Angeles Mountains with Malibu and all that. They're having, yeah. you know, they're doing their wines and all that. And so you're seeing all this leading all the way up to Sonoma, Napa, Mendocino, Anderson, all, the, all those areas are just exploding with um, wines, which makes it really nice because there's so many different interpretations out there to, to choose from. And that's a great thing that I, I also wanted to, that you just highlighted on is the natural biodynamic, the organic, the small boutique, a lot of family owned wineries. That's really great. Uh, because right now, especially with all the stuff with the pandemic, this is the time to really support the small businesses, yeah. the small boutique wineries to help yeah. keep them afloat. Yeah. Um, so I really appreciate that. That's an, another hats off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just also think like if you're going to, um, you know, wine as much as it is life for me, it's also a luxury item. Let's keep it honest. Um, right. And so I, um, you know, I think if you're going to have that much land, you should take care of it if you can. And um, I think that, you know, we, we owe it, obviously, to the earth and to take care right. of it and to be sustainable. And um, I just have a, a heart for biodynamic wines. They tend to uh, have more life to them for me. Um, they're, they're awake and alive in the bottle and in the glass. Um, there's an energy 
about the wines that are biodynamic. Um, but yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm also just like a big fan of people who have um, really good practices, you know, that are practicing right. uh, those things. Because it's not everybody can be certified and I don't expect everybody to be certified at all. Um, but, you know, that's where you have to get to know your producer, you know, have a connection to your farmer. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and that gives you a better interpretation to, for the consumer that you're reaching out to. When you have that connection, that personal connection, that, that works. A whole, it goes a long way. It goes a yeah. long way. Um, I, have a, I have a few people commenting, like, what is she drinking today? What are you the, drinking? Siobhan? The bottle's in the house. I have to go get it. I'll take a photo and put it on my Instagram later. But I am drinking um, the white Pinot Noir from Brandborg, which is based out of Elkton, Oregon, which is becoming one of my favorite AVAs. Um, and it's, it's mostly whole cluster pressed, um, very refreshing, super great for this really sunny day we're having today. Yeah, and, um, absolutely. Terry and Sue Brandberg do an amazing job down in Elkton. Um, and this is one of my favorites of theirs. Yeah. So it's their white Pinot Noir rosé. Sort of rosé. White Pinot Noir, we'll call it. Very nice. <laughs> and even the, uh, the Solero uh, family wine says, you got to come up and visit them. You got to come down them. and visit yeah, them. Yeah, I will. You got to. Yes. <laughs> See, you got, they, she accepted your invite. She's coming down. She's coming, coming down tomorrow. <laughs> I actually have a tour tomorrow. Oh my God, I'm so uh, happy. <laughs> yeah. um, it's so so. Business is good. Business is. It seems like it's starting to move forward, right? Yeah. So you know, like I said, I I I never stopped doing Willamette Valley wine tours. I don't do them uh, very often. Um, I only, you know, I'm very selective. It's it's a very it's a lot for me to give. Um, but I, I right. think dirty radish is like a pie. So, you know, I've got a little, my hand in a little bit of everything. So that keeps me really busy. Um, but business is great. I haven't had, um, uh, any problems so far, <laughs> knock on wood. Awesome. Um, but the, consul awesome. the consulting is my main thing. So I'm, I'm pretty busy with the consulting, um, uh, which is fantastic. I, I love all my clients right now. And then uh, right. just speaking engagements, you know, and things like that. So I stay plenty busy. Probably will be busy. doing some events this summer. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, we'll be doing a wine release, obviously, at some point. Um, awesome. So, yeah, there's a lot of irons in the fire, as they say. <laughs> but I like, I like it. I like that it. That is. They're like having my own yeah, children. Yeah, absolutely. Those are my children. All my businesses <laughs> are my children. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely well it's so it's so great to hear how it, it is really nice to hear that there's positive movement you're getting positive movement you see things happening in the future yeah. with events and, and your wine release and and that's really great um you know that's what it's all about you know we went through i think what we went through only makes us stronger and we're going to have a, a much broader appreciation for things when everything is completely said and done, hopefully. Yeah. Um, and yeah, yeah, hopefully. Um, what do you see as far as how, do, as far as the, the, the women are going, as far as the women going in the industry, how is, how do you see that taking off? How do you feel about that? Like, have you seen, a lot of opportunity for yourself and other women that are in the, in, in the wine industry right now? Yeah. I mean, it's an interesting thing, you know, like I was talking about this the other day. We, we, we definitely talk a lot about the men winemakers, especially the, like um, the kind of pioneers who created the, the Valley here. But I guarantee you that every single one of those men had a wife who was doing just as much work if not more, they were raising the children, right. they were helping plant, they were helping with food. So to say that it's like the men have been making the wine this whole time is a little far-fetched. Perhaps the women are right. shifting more into the title 
of winemaker or into these roles that they maybe weren't once in before, but they've, we've been here for a long time <laughs> doing this. Right. Work, Absolutely. If not more work. So as far as women being able to, I mean, obviously you're definitely seeing with all these movements, you're definitely seeing um, more women and women of color having access to these things um, and being, you know, heard about and seen and, and being having availability to do these things. Um, because there is, you know, with wine, there's a, there's a, there's a threshold, you know, to get into it. Right. Um, it's not right. cheap to make wine. It's not cheap to learn about wine. It's not cheap to drink wine. <laughs> so it's, yeah. it can be difficult for some people. But I think that women have uh, just as much a place in wine as anybody else, of course. And uh, we, we're already seeing it. We're going to continue to see it. And if not, you're going to especially be hearing more about it for sure. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I see, you know, right now it seems like the passion is really coming out of the women right now it just the community is really sustaining really supporting one another it seems to be getting stronger but i think there needs to be a lot more male voices supporting that because they've always they've always been in that that role or told to be or you know the icon of being in that role but i think we all need to kind of push forward we need to basically support that and celebrate that because you guys are doing so much well it's interesting i was at a um i was speaking on a panel at linfield university about women in wine and you know this man asked the question of like well what can i do as a man in the workplace you know to to better help women um on that trajectory and i said it was very simple you make the coffee you go pick up the birthday cake you do the ordering of the office supplies we've put women into these roles and it's that's just how right. it is right and that's just not how it is and it starts being that being that like easy and um making that equality you know sort of thing just start there you know i was a gm at restaurants for a really long time and most of the chefs i worked with were male and they thought i was somehow the office person i'm not the office manager if you want to order the oysters right. or order it you do that that's not my job and oh right. you can't find a pen i don't know what to tell you not my job to order them <laughs> like you know what I mean? like <laughs> or print something for right. you because you don't know how to use a printer. I, I don't know. Like it's, right. it's that mentality, you know, and I, I would, I would, I'm not going to do the thing. I'm not going to coordinate the um, employee party, you know, like, why is that? A, why is party planning the woman's job? Like, right. No, no. So it's just even starting there, I think is really helpful. And then like, I'm so proud to be a woman. I'm proud to be a black woman. I'm proud to be all these things, but I'm also just a person who does all these things. And sometimes gender doesn't come into the place of those things, you know, right. I'm, um, but we, we are, we have to say it to get past the point of not saying it anymore. Right. Cause you don't right. say yeah. man winemaker, male winemaker, you say winemaker. Right. So I'm just, I just happen to be a woman making wine. It's still the same. I'm still yeah. making the wine. So yeah. we'll, we'll see that shift come. You know, we have a long way to go. We've come a long way. Um, but we're, we're on that path. That's, we're on that path. That's, that's, that's yeah, that's, I, I, you know, again, I think it's the, the, the same thing for me is just, it, it's, it's, you know, truthfully, it's been a, a frustration seeing the lacking of support in, in that area. And that's why I, I really try to do my best to celebrate it and support it and help keep it moving forward. Because I think that it's just, it's one of those areas, like you said, you know, where, that was the one thing that I told my wife when we when she was pregnant, I was like, okay, so 
you're having this child, so you don't think that I'm going to have you cook and clean and do all the, these things, these atypical things. I'm going right. to do those things because you are doing this. And that's right. the thing is we got to change that mentality. We got to change that mentality and shift and go, this is what we need to do to help give you the reins. You should be, you know, you're doing this. We could do that. That's just, that should just be the, the simple mentality. Like it is, like you said, it's, very simple. Yeah. Especially in the workplace, you know, obviously, you know, marriage and children and things like that are quite different, but it's just still that like mentality of like that a woman in the, in the workplace is going to be the like office manager, right. Or whatever. Cause right. like everybody right. has different roles and things they like to do when it comes to, um, you know, house chores and taking care of children, but we still do that, right? In, in in that kind of way. Oh, the husband is watching his kids today. He's not the babysitter. He's the father. It's not like he's babysitting right. his kids, right? Like, it's, yeah, his kids. Um, so it's that yeah. same kind of. That's one mentality. But then we're talking about like the workplace. Yeah, and you know, also, you know, just like um, you know, I did the um, assemblage uh, symposium back in January of 2020, and even just being at a wine event that was run and organized and made for women was quite different. You know, women have been going to wine events forever, but this wine event, we were, um, people were commenting all the time, the fact that we had a place for women to nurse if they needed to. We thought about people having a, um, an introvert space so that you could like relax or be quiet if you needed to. How come those things right. haven't been in other symposiums? Because they were typically put together by men, right? And they're not thinking about those things. Right. But why, but why not? But, but right. why not? You know? So yeah. it's it's a thing that we have to start sort of shifting and be thinking about everybody's comfort and everybody's, you know, needs and um, being more equal in that way and not being surprised when a woman uh, is a badass and makes wine or whatever she does Absolutely. or a farmer or, you know, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> no, and, and, and that's the thing that I, I've, I've just been really um, – like I said, I, it, it's, it's one thing to discover, but I think it's one thing to see it and, and embrace it. And that's the one thing that I, I've just saw in just the last few months of talking with the many women that I've sat down with and learned so much. And it's actually helped me as a, a male like actually learn mm -hmm. more of what we need to do, you know, and how we can be better. And yeah. it's, it's, it's such a, it's, it's such a, like I said, it's such an awesome thing of what you ladies are doing. And uh, I, I can't say it enough. And, and it just makes me think like, man, have we, you know, have we stuck our foot in our mouth for so long because it, held you ladies back because you ladies are kicking ass right now I mean, you guys are doing so, it's awesome huh I, yeah it's true i don't disagree yeah. i don't disagree yeah i i just have a very i grew up in a very different kind of household those types of roles and gender roles weren't really there everybody did everything um right and you know i i just i as a now you know, in this business and doing what I do, you know, I don't, I don't feel like I face too many challenges um, as a woman. I definitely face challenges as a woman of color, but um, woman of color. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I'm still just, you know, plugging along. You got to just keep going and keep doing and like making yourself happy. And that's just kind of what I keep doing. <laughs> right. Yeah. And that must be just that, that issue of it's it's a it's a it's it's still a, an ongoing issue we see it in everything just in everyday life but it's probably worse in our own industry being first of all being a, a female and then a, fe a woman of color on top of that yeah. is there anything that you would like to see as far as that change is how is how can we do better in that in the industry 
I mean, I think I would love that. to see more opportunities for people who maybe come from different socioeconomic backgrounds to have access to making wine. You know, right in 2020, you know, in the middle of 2020, when the Black Lives Movement really started picking up and people were really trying to be helpful and do things, um, you know, I was getting a lot of requests for people to do things and they were asking for people of color, but they weren't wanting to pay them. And I'm like that doesn't work you can't ask work. Yeah. people to um you can't ask people to do stuff for free when you're asking because they're specifically a person of color that just doesn't make any sense right, right? and so that was a right. hard thing for me people you know people were like oh we really want to open up the doors to these interns and we wanted them to come through the doors and then when i would say well you, you need to pay them their answer was well this is how we've been doing it the whole time well, there's a reason then that people of color aren't in your spaces if you've been doing it one way the whole time and there weren't people of color. Right. Like, put them just do the right. two things together. So you have to be right. willing to, like, not only open the door, but maybe shift a little bit, too, and how you're going to do something because that's, there's a reason that people haven't had access. Right? Right. Absolutely. And so that's what I would like to see. Is I'd like to see a little bit more of, of the actual, like, yeah, putting the money where your mouth is things cost Absolutely. money my time is you know valuable so um and i think that if you're trying to diversify your space you're gonna have to diversify how you bring those people in and what you do with them once they're there right right so i hope people will do that absolutely yeah could it, that great well said well said <laughs> I, uh, uh, I, I start I start stumbling with my dad brain, but very well said. Um, Thank you. I, I love what you said. Absolutely, yeah. And now that we're getting close to the ending of our our time, you know, I I I hate these limitations on our time through your Instagram, but I you know I always want to say thank you. You know, thank you for for your time. Giving thank your time you. is is important. You sat. You sat here, you shared your time with not just myself, but with the viewer. And it's very valuable words and information. And your story is incredible. Um, oh, thank you. And it just, it, yeah, it, it's, it's something that, like, like I said, for me, I've only dreamed about doing and uh, being, be, doing what you've done. I wish I was in your shoes several times. <laughs> Uh, but uh, it hasn't been easy. But, don't don't yeah, think that it's yeah, been I, easy. I know, I know, I know it's I know it's not easy. But but yeah, I appreciate even the the work that you do, the hard work that you do. You're putting in some really hard work, and Thank you're you. trailblazing. Like you know, with all these other ladies out there, you're trailblazing. You're 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 setting down. You're breaking down barriers, and and we need to continue to to be on to 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 continue to support that and, and celebrate it. Um, Thank you. One of the things I like doing for my for my last question is really is um, I know we just talked about you know being a woman a woman of color. What would you like to offer any woman or anybody that is going in that is has barriers against them and they're starting off into the winery or into the wine business or the wine industry or in the middle of their journey or at their crossroads what kind of advice would you give them i would say that a closed mouth doesn't get fed so if you have a question if you have an ask ask the worst thing someone can do is say no but you'll never know unless you ask and so you know don't think that just because you are a woman or a person of color or you come from a certain socioeconomic background or um whatever those limitations may be they're all up here they're not really out here um and you just have to ask and i just keep knocking on doors until people say yes and eventually someone says yes so i just keep doing it but i would say that is yeah. the thing to do is to just you really have to just go after it just do it yeah see two but two but awesome. if you want you can <laughs> absolutely 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 great words well said again siobhan ball Thank you from Dirty Radish. I thank love you. what you're doing. Thank you so much for your time. 
everyone, thank you so much for joining us uh, and and offering. I'm sorry for all the Siobhan. technical difficulties. So sorry. Oh, <laughs> no worries. I'm just glad that we got reconnected because, again, like I said, you're sharing your time, your energy, and I want to make sure that you came uh, across okay. Everybody's, you know, getting all the information that they need and. Um, so like I said, it's, it's well appreciated here. Thank you so much for sitting with me. I wish you many more, uh, accolades and all the things that you're doing, wonderful things that you're doing. Um, we got to definitely keep in touch since we're so yeah. close. And when that, when the opportunity comes, I'm definitely going to bring my kid over so he can be, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I but, you know, I don't just know got... if you want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but thank you so much for, you. for, for your time. And, and knowing that you're this close, it's, it's great to know that you, uh, I have a neighbor close by that, um, I can chat with. So again, Javon Ball, thank you so much. A toast to you. Thank you so much, everyone. All right. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. So don't forget, you can f follow Siobhan Ball at Dirty Radish. She, that is her, uh, her call sign on Instagram. Um, and she's an amazing ambassador to the industry. Um, I can't say it enough. Uh, the, the ambassadors I've been sitting down with, they're trailblazers. They're making paths. They're making ways. If you're just beginning your journey into the wine industry, these are the people that you should look to. Um, they'll offer you very much, they'll offer you guidance and support and great conversation, great advice like Siobhan did. Um, and like I said, if you don't follow her, follow her now. Uh, join her, her wine tours if you can. I would love to do that. Remember, she goes from Oregon and France when the pandemic hopefully starts to lift. Um, hopefully, everybody is staying safe uh, and well. And don't forget, stay tuned. In just a little over an hour, I'm going to be sitting with Gabriela Fernandez. Um, that is going to be an, an amazing show, and that starts at 5.30 Pacific Standard Time. Um, hopefully, you can join us for that. But... Again, I appreciate your time, everyone, everyone that, that joined me on here, that joined us on here. Thank you for your time, for sharing your time. Thank you for your support, always. I really appreciate it. Until next time, stay safe, stay well, and cheers.